okay so these are some of the advanced numericals on the laws of motion right so the first is the a hockey puck having a mass of 0 0.30 kg slides on the frictionless horizontal surface of ice rink and two hockey sticks strikes the puck simultaneously exerting the forces on the puck shown in figure so basically what happened the puck is shown this is a this is a puck and a hockey stick is doing is striking it in a direction we can say the f1 is a force and 20 degree and then f2 upwards to the x axis it is making 60 degree and the value of force is given 5 newton and the 8 newtons okay you can read this question and its direction is 5 equals to 60 and the angles are given above the x axis below the x axis and determine both the magnitude and direction of the puck's acceleration right so this is the question which is given to you now what you need to do determine both the magnitude and direction of puck's acceleration how do you, how will you find it so for solving these type of questions the first thing we do is basically breaking the force into the two components the horizontal and the vertical components so i've made this diagram as you can see this is f1 here this is f2 here and this is 20 degree this is 60 degree here and the, these are f2 so if say if i'm doing this force this force f1 in the horizontal and the vertical direction what i'm going to do is so horizontal component is cos so you can see it is f1 cos 20 degree and the vertical component is sine so it is f1 sine 20 degree now talk about f2 the horizontal component is f2 cos 60 degree and the vertical component is f2 sine 60 degree so now what will happen we will do the horizontal and the vertical forces equate so the horizontal forces now you can see the horizontal forces f2 cos 60 and f1 cos 20 degree they are in same direction so we will add these two forces f1 cos 20 degree and f2 cos 60 degree and we will just place the value f1 and f2 it's given f1 equals to 5 newtons and f2 equals to 8 newtons so we have placed the values here and we have find out this force fx now we will find out the force on in the y direction so in the y direction you can see there are two forces f2 sine 60 and f1 sine 20 in an opposite direction so the force which is greater so f2 is greater you can see the value f2 is 8 newton so we will subtract that from the we will we will subtract the another force from f2 because f2 is more why subtract because these are in opposite direction not in the same direction when we were doing the when we were doing the horizontal components they were in same direction right so now so i have just delta f uh, summation f y equals to f2 sine 60 degree minus f1 sine 20 degree we have placed the values and we have find out this 5.21 newtons now acceleration we all know f equals to ma we are just applying the formula ax so 8.69 by 0 0.30 and a y 17 meter per second square and how we will find out the magnitude a equals to under root ax square plus a y square so we will just place the values ax and a y and we will find out the magnitude of acceleration which is 34 meter per second square right so these are the question this this is the first of the first question so the the simple thing is we need to understand we need to understand the how to apply the how to apply the horizontal and the vertical components right okay i think this one is clear to you now the second question it's very important a traffic light weighing 122 newton hangs from a cable tied to the two other cables fastened to support as in figure okay this is the figure which is given to you so this figure illustrates this is a traffic light here so this is a traffic light here it is hanging it is hanging here and it is creating a tension t3 this is creating a tension t3 and this is t1 and t2 these are the two cables which is attached on a wall this is a wall here right now this is making an angle theta 1 this is making an angle theta 2 
right? And the theta 1 and theta 2 is given to you here. And traffic light weighing 122 Newton is also given to you, right? You need to, you need to tell me, does the traffic light remain hanging in this situation or will one of the cables break? Okay, so when the cable will, when, how, when the cable will break, if the tension exceeds 100 Newton, it is mentioned here, 100 Newton, right? So how I'm going to solve this question? Very simple. I'll just make a free body diagram here. Just the same thing. I've mentioned the two cables, T1. This is T1 here. This cable is T1. This cable is T2 here. And it is creating an angle. So this angle is theta 1. So either you can use this figure or you can use this figure here. Right? So I'm using this one. So I'm just taking this. If this angle is theta 1, so this angle will also be theta 1. Right? So this angle will also be theta 1 alternate opposite angles. So I'm just taking that theta 1 here and I'm writing the vertical components and the horizontal components. It's very simple. For T2, we will find the vertical and the horizontal components. So the horizontal component will be T2 cos theta 2 and the vertical component is T1 sine theta 1. Right? For T1 also, we will find the horizontal and the vertical components. So it is cos theta 1 and T2 sine theta 2. And now we will just equate the horizontal and the vertical components. So you can see here the vertical components that means T3 will be equal to T2 sine theta 2 plus T1 sine theta 1. So you can see the equation number 1 and the horizontal components. There are two horizontal components T1 cos theta 1 and T2 cos theta 2. So we are equating these two, right? And we will substitute the value of 2 in equation number 1 and then we will find out the values. We are just putting all the values of theta 2, theta 1, T3 and we will find out the value of T2 and T1, right? So after finding the values, I can see T1 is 73.5 Newtons and T2 is 97.6 Newtons which is less than 100 Newtons. So both values are less than 100 newtons, so cables is not going to break. Right? I'm just removing this. Now the second part. Suppose both the angles in figure are equal. What would be the relationship between T1 and T2? That means they are saying theta1 equals to theta2. So what will happen? We know this relation T1 cos theta1 equals to T2 cos theta2. We are going to equate this and then we will find T2 will be equal to T1. Okay. Now question number 3. It is exactly the same as question number 2. So you can see there is a first figure A. It shows the load hanging from the ceiling of the elevator that is moving at constant velocity. Find the tension in each of the three strands of cord supporting each load. Right. So again we will do the horizontal and the vertical components in both the figures and we will find it. But the most important thing is now the mass is given 5 kg here. Right. In the first question, in the previous question, what is happening? It was given the total force, 122 newtons. Now it is giving 5 kg. So I need to multiply 9.8 into it to find the total force, right? So A part is the same, okay? So alternate opposite angle, 40 degree, 40 degree. We are going to break the components. T2 cos 50 degree is the horizontal components. The vertical component is T1 sine, uh, T2 sine 50 degree. Same with T1, T1 cos 40 degree and T1 sine 40 degree, right? And now T3 is 5 into 9.8. So T3 is 49 Newtons, right? Now the same, just we will equate the vertical and the horizontal components. 
we will be getting these two equations. You can see the vertical components are T3, T2 sine 50 degree and T1 sine 40 degree. So I am equating the vertical components and the horizontal components. T1 cos 40 degree and T2 cos 50 degree. And we can find out the value here, right? We are just substituting all the values and we will find out T2 equals to 38 newtons and T1 equals to 32 newtons, right? Now the second one, second one is simple, this one. So here in this T2 string is not creating an angle. So T2 will be just the T2. There is no, there, there is a horizontal component T2 and there is no vertical component, right? So what we are going to do is, it's 10 kg is given, so we will multiply 9.8 into it. So it will be 98 newtons. Hmm? So what I'm doing is, I'm equating the horizontal components and the vertical components. So horizontal components is T2 equals to T1 cos 60 degree. And the vertical component is T1 sine 60 degree equals to T3. We will equate all these and we will find the values of T1 and T2. So this is question number 3. Okay. Now question number 4. A car of mass M is on the IC driveway inclined at an angle theta as in figure. Okay. So basically what is happening? There is a car which is, it is a car here. It is a car which is driving here on a inclined surface and which which is making a theta angle with the ground right find the acceleration of the car assuming the driveway is frictionless okay now we need to find it so what will happen we will just draw the free body diagram so if the surface is flat that means this is an upward direction the normal and then the another one will be in the downward direction that will be mg right now the surface is not flat it is inclined that means this is this will be making this thing will be making an angle 90 degree to the inclined surface and the another one is mg right so that's why i have shown in this figure in this figure mg and it is creating n the normal which is 90 degree to the inclined surface okay so this angle will be theta this angle will be theta here because this is theta so this angle will be theta here so this is n the vertical component so the opposite will be mg cos so we need to break the components for mg so there will be two the cos theta and the sin theta so mg cos theta is this one and mg sin theta is this one right so just uh, equating the components so from the figure we can see n equals to mg cos theta and f equals to mg sin theta right this one is our force so and force equals to ma will do mm cancel and a equals to g sin theta right so we have find out the acceleration now Suppose the car is released from rest at the top of the incline and the distance from the car's front bumper to the bottom of the incline is D. How long does it take the front bumper to reach the bottom of the hill? And what is the car's speed as it arrives there? Okay. So we know the equations of the motion s equals to ut plus half a d square. So what is given u equals to zero is given s equals to d is given right and d equals so what will happen if we are placing these values in this equation we are getting d equals to half a t square and we know a equals to g sine theta and uh, so we can find the value of t from this equation and then we will put the value of t in v equals to u plus a t here and because we know u equals to zero and we know the value of a and t and then we can find the values of v here right so please so try to solve these questions as these questions i have already explained in the class so solve these questions thank you